right, in this video, I'm gonna make a bed that a player can sleep in. So we hit this little proximity prompt, sleep, boom. And then when I wanna wake up, I wake up. And I can't move while I'm sleeping. All right, so that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get a fresh world and do that. There's a fresh world right here. And I'll add a part, and this is gonna be my bed. Let's go bed. And I'm gonna change the size. Let's see, we've got four is good for thickness. Uh, for uh, length, I mean, or width. I'll do 1.2 for thickness, and then I'll do eight for length. We wanna be able to lay down in it. All right, cool. Make sure collisions are off so you can duplicate in place. Control D, drag this out. This is going to be the footboard. I'm gonna need this so I can focus my, um, my player in the right direction. So we'll just say footboard, change the size of that. Go ahead and make that four by five by point five cool and then i'll do a control d to duplicate that this is going to be the headboard uh there we go headboard and i'll just put that so that uh, it looks more like a bed it's not going to do anything let's make that a little bit taller though so we know which one is the headboard and which one's the footboard We'll make that six, six studs. Cool, let's go ahead and hit collisions, bump everything into place, move that down. Cool beans. All right, I'm gonna anchor all these parts so they don't move, anchored. And then I'm gonna right click, and I group them into a model, and the model is gonna be called a bed. All right, and then we can make it look more like a bed, I don't know. I mean, I think I did green. I'm not gonna do a pillow though. You can add your own pillow. So in the bed, let's add a proximity prompt so that when somebody comes up close to it, I need an R here, we can query them to see what if they wanna sleep or not. So we're gonna do two. We're gonna do one for sleep, and then go ahead for action text, change that to sleep. And then let's do another one. We'll do a control D. This one's gonna be for waking up. I'm just gonna call it wake. Action text, I'll spell that out, wake up. Cool beans, all right, we got a bed. Now you can catch the proximity prompt um, triggers from client or server. If you do server side, you're gonna have to do uh, remote events to make your client move around for your animation. So I'm just gonna do everything locally. You'll still see it, everybody will still see it, but I thought it would be an easier video. So I'm gonna go to starter player, and then I'm gonna to go to starter player scripts, and I add a local script. The local script, I'm gonna call this sleep loc. All right, and then in sleep loc, we're gonna need some variables. Let's go ahead and get a variable for our proximity prompt service, right? Game, get service, proximity prompt service. Awesome. And we'll get the local player, right? And then we'll have game get service players dot local player. Cool. And then let's go ahead and get the character because we're going to want to move them around, right? So L player for local player dot character. There's character or L player dot character added weight. Here's character added, wait. That just makes sure that your character is available before you move on in the script. All right, and now let's get the humanoid from the character. I'll do a wait for child, humanoid. And we're probably gonna move them. Well, we'll do that, let's, we'll do that later. Let's go ahead and check our proximity prompt. See if we're getting our prompts. So local function on prompt, triggered we're going to get a prompt and then we're get, we're going to get the player who triggered it now you will need that if this is a server side script we're not going to need it because it's a local script but if you want to do the server side for better housekeeping you can but it'll work just fine um it'll, it'll work just fine locally so i did a prompt i'm going to check to see if the prompt name is sleep Right. If it's sleep, then we'll do some sleep stuff. Else, what else could it be? Else if. Let's do an else if because there might be more prompts, right? 
prompt dot name equals wake. That's our other one. So we have a sleep and a wake. Oh, and let's call the service before we forget because I always do that. It's our, our, our we'll catch our trigger, I mean. So the proximity, oh my gosh, proximity prompt service has something called um, prompt triggered. It has a bunch of stuff too. You can play a lot of, you can mess around with these, but triggered is the main one. You clicked on it, something happened. We're going to do our on prompt triggered. So when somebody clicks the prompt, we're going to call that function. That function is going to fire and we're going to do stuff. Let's go ahead and get the variable for the bed, right? So where's the bed? The bed prompt parent, right? That's not the bed model. That's the bed part. And then let's turn that prompt off because we clicked on it. We'll say enabled equals false. And then let's make sure that the, the wake one is enabled. So on the bed, there's a wake prompt. Enabled equals true. That should work pretty good. So we're going we're gonna to turn off the sleep one. We're going to turn on the wake one. We're going to do animation stuff in here. Let's put a note. Animation stuff. Cool. Let's copy this. Control C. So when we hit the wake, the bed will be the same. Uh, that prompt will be turned off. That'll be the wake prompt. This will be the sleep prompt. So if you go to do like a tuck in and stuff like that, you can put that in here. I just, that's why I wanted to do two, a sleep and a wake. So you know how to add them. Turn one on, turn one off. All right, let's test this first. Let's see if the sleep and the wake prompt uh, appear and disappear properly. There's my bed. Oh, wake is wrong. Let's just go ahead and get into our world here. I probably just labeled it wrong. So wake up. And then there's sleep. Sleep is enabled. Wake disable. So we want to leave that disabled. Now we can try it. All right. There's our sleep. Boom. Wake up. And then we're back to sleep and wake up. So when we walk away, come back and sleep. Now you can walk away now and the wake up is going to stay there because we haven't put our character to sleep, right? We just want to make sure they switch. All right, let's go back and do some of that. Uh, what else do we need? So in our variables here, let's go ahead and do a local humanoid root part so we can move them around. Uh, that's going to be on the character. Do a wait for child. Humanoid root part. Make sure I spelled humanoid right. All righty. And then what else do we need? Oh, we're going to do an animation. Let's do that now. Let's go ahead and do the animation now. Let's go here. Plugins. Rig builder. I'm going to use R15s. This will work with R6 if that's what your game is using. But uh, I'm going to use R15s. So there's my R15. I like to work on this side of the model. Hit uh, animation editor. Click on your dummy. And then let's call this sleep. There we go. We're going to create it. Go to these three dots. And we're already saved. Uh, let's set the animation priority. I don't know if you can see that. It should say action. I'm going to move this up so you can see it. There we go. Hit these three dots. Action. All right. That'll override any of my other animations. Cool. Now let's find the lower torso here or whatever is the main part. There we go. Got it. All right, and now I want to turn him for, uh, what do you call it, horizontal. Boom, boom. Cool beans. I'm also going to move him down, so let's go to home. There we go. I'm going to move him down to the ground. Cool. All right, so I only have the animation on the lower torso. So if there's like a idle animation or stuff, his legs are going to look bent. You can go and you can go all, get all those parts and control what they want to, what you want to do when they're sleeping. I am just going to do this one point and then I'm going to hit looped. 
right? So he's not going to get out of that animation until I stop it with my code. All right, so let's go to our three dots. We're going to save it just in case we need to edit it again. And now it used to be export. Now it's published to Roblox. There we go. Sleep. We can go ahead and make our animation. There we go. And we'll get this ID right here copied. So we can close this. Before we forget, let's zoom on down to our sleep loc. Hit the plus, add animation, click on it, add your ID before you lose it. There, you just have to put the number in and then it's going to be prepended with the Roblox asset ID um, URI information. So for animation, I'm going to call this sleep animation, sleep anim, cool. And then we're going to get rid of this. I think we're good to go on that move back over to my bed I'll look at it so I'll be inspired all right now we got to get our animation stuff so I want to do local sleep anim hum for humanoid and we don't load the human the animations right in the humanoid now we use this animator but it will work the old way it's just this is supposed to be better all right so we'll say load animation and that's right on my script right there it is sleep anim cool beans all right what else do we need oh i'm going to tween the guy right above the bed i'm going to tween the player so i'm also going to get the tween service game get service tween service and then since we're using the tween service i'll just do a general tween info for time so if you just add one variable here, it'll be the time it takes to complete the tween, right? The tween's going to move the player in, in place. I'm going to do it in 0.5 seconds. All right, so let's go down here. And here's our animation stuff. We'll go ahead and add that. Uh, what are we going to do? We are going to... Let's turn the walk, the walk speed off so he can't move around. Walk speed. We could just anchor the humanoid root part. We'll make that zero. Oh, and then we'll do the jump power. But if you are experiencing problems with jump power, they changed it, right? So default now, your humanoid doesn't use jump power. It uses something else, and I forgot what it was. But I can do this. I can say use jump power, and I'll make that true. All right, now it's using it like it used to do before. It has some sort of auto jump now where you don't need, you don't need the jump power. Let's go ahead and do a uh, humanoid root part anchored for our smooth movement for our tweening. So we have anchored equals true. All right, and now I'll do my tween. There we go. TS, uh, create, and we're gonna tween on the humanoid root part. Tween info is going to be the time it takes to do the tween. Our goal, so this thing in the curly brackets here, I should make this a little bigger in case you guys can't see it. There we go. This thing in the, little gir the curly brackets is our goal. So we're going to go C frame of the humanoid root part is going to equal a new C frame, right? And the new C frame is going to have the bed position, the bed dot position and what else is it going to have let's go to the next line boom oh, i hate that little telesense thing way it gets in the way uh, we need a focal point so we have the bed right the beds the bed has a parent right which is the bed model and the footboard is on the model that has a position i know that's kind of crazy probably a better way of doing that. All right, we're also gonna just lift them up a little bit. We'll say vector three dot new. We're, and I'm, you know what, I'm gonna be lazy. I'm just gonna move them up five studs. What you would normally do here is you'd find out how high he had to go by the bed, one half of the bed height, and then the humanoid root part height. But I'm just gonna say, go five studs, All right? That's gonna be about right. All right, so now we're going to play the tween, All right? Let's see. Oh, this is a colon. 
play. What else do we need? We're going to go tween dot completed. We're going to wait for the completion of the tween. Right, he's going to be right above the bed. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn off the humanoid root parts anchor. So it was anchored and now I'm going to say it's false. That way he'll drop down to the bed, right? If I have it on, he's going to be um, right where my tween completed and then my my um, animation might not might not put him on the bed right. I, I was lazy, All right? So now I'm going to get my sleep animation. I'm going to play that. Oops, there we go. So these are colons right here. If you guys aren't familiar with tweens, don't forget, these are curly brackets, right? These things are curly brackets. So this is the goal. This is the whole thing is the goal. Where you want the tween to go to. The humanoid root part. All right, cool. I don't want to spend too much time on that. I have a lot of tween stuff that you can, you can look at. So now, when we're done sleeping, we want to wake up, what do we got to do? Well, we're going to stop our sleep animation. And we need our walk speed and our jump power. And I'm not going to set that back to whatever it was before. We're only going to use jump power from here on out. It's going to look exactly the same. Well, it should. Right? So we got, I think walk speed is 16. Jump power is 50. Cool. What else? We're done. Cool. Let's, let's see if it works. There's my bed. Let's put the... The view on here. Oh, I don't see any errors. That's awesome. Sleep. Oh, look at that. You know what? I'm going to move this up a little bit, right? So that the prompt is a little bit higher. The sleep, I don't mind, but the wake up, I do mind. So let's go ahead and move that proximity prompt up for the wake up, right? We don't want it right on our character. All right. So I went to the wake on the bed and there should be something called UI offset. Here it is. Cool beans. And I'm going to move that up, I don't know, 200 pixels. This is pixel offset. Just be careful if you're using on phones and stuff, testing it on that first. All right, let's try it again. That way the wake should be a little higher. Sleep is where, it was, where I wanted it. Ah, there it is, wake. Wake's a little high. We don't even need that that high. But now you know how to do it. That's pretty cool. I see I'm hitting the space bar. I'm not moving. I'm hitting the W. I'm not moving. If I hit E, it'll move. There we go. All right, so that's pretty good. I will see you in the next video.